In this video, I'm going to go over AP Precalculus topic uh, 2.5, which is exponential function context and data modeling. So we're going to be writing exponential functions uh, in a variety of different ways, but at a minimum, um, in order to write an equation for an exponential function, we need either the common ratio and the initial value or two input-output pairs. Uh, so let's look at our first example. Uh, Joanna took a job in 2010 where she earned $52,000 her first year. Each year she earns a 4% raise. Uh, so we're going to write an equation uh, in our exponential form, a b to the t, since we're talking about time, that models Joanna's salary where t is the number of years since 2010. Okay, so in this case we were given the initial amount, which was $52,000. And our base, we get a 4% raise, so we want to show exponential growth. So that's going to be 1.04 for my base. Uh, then if I plug in, if this is from 2010 to get our salary in 2020, we're going to plug in 20 into our equation. Which, obviously, you type that into the calculator we get $76,972.70 is her salary in 2020. Okay, next. According to the U.S. Census, El Paso County had a population of approximately 500,000 people in 2000 and 700,000 people in 2020. What is the general equation? Uh, where T is measured in years since 2000. Um, so we're given an initial amount and a future amount. So I'm going to set my equation equal to 700,000 with my initial value being 500,000. We're solving for that B value and to go from 500,000 to 700,000 from 2000 to 2020 we're raising this to the 20. So we're going to solve algebraically for b. Uh, I'm going to divide by 500,000. So 700,000 divided by 500,000 is 7 fifths. So my b is going to be 7 fifths to the 1 20th. And we're going to leave it like that uh, in order to maintain calculator accuracy. So my equation is going to be 500,000 times 7 fifths to the 1 over 20 t. Uh, then we'll use that to predict the population in 2015. So we'll simply plug 15 into our equation. Again, using the calculator to get our population of 64,353, and we'll just round to the nearest whole number. All right, uh, so the number of Mrs. Benson's, me, uh, YouTube subscribers, you, uh, can be modeled by the exponential function f of t equals a b to the t, where f represents the number of subscribers t months after the start of the year. In March, uh, t equals 3. She had 110 subscribers, and in October, t equals 10. Uh, we have 330 subscribers. Uh, so we're going to use the data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for the constants a and b in the expression. So what we have is the output value and the input value. We don't know a or b. So for March, we're going to have a, b cubed. And then our next equation would be 330 equals a, b to the 10th. Okay. Uh, so to actually write this equation, we are going to use the calculator. Uh, in my classroom, we use the TI-84. So that's the steps that I'm going to show. Um, we're going to run an exponential regression. Uh, to find the equation, and then we're going to use that to predict how many I'm going to have in December. Uh, so in my data, in my table, and I'll do this on the calculator in a second, 
Uh, in my list one and list two, in my list one, we're going to have the months, three and ten. And in list two, we're going to have our outputs, the number of subscribers. And we can do this with just two points. Uh, so in the calculator for the TI-84, okay, we're going to use the stat menu and you're going to edit. Okay, if you have stuff in here, we're just going to clear that out by highlighting the list and clearing or going through and deleting all of them. That's fine. Uh, so I'm going to have 3 and 10. And over here, I'm going to have 1, 10, and 3, 30. Okay. Next, I want to run the regression. So I'm going to get out of there. You're going to go back to the stat menu. And now we're going over to calc. Okay. There's lots of different things we can do. We've done quadratic, we've done cubic, we've done quartic. Uh, we're looking for the exponential regression. Okay, we're using list one and list two. And since we're using this equation for a follow-up, I want to store the equation in Y1. So if you go to the F4 shortcut menu, we can get that Y1. Um, alternatively, you go to VARS over to YVARS function, and you can get it through that menu. But the shortcut menu just makes this very nice. So I'm going to store it and we're going to calculate it. Okay, so it gives us our general form, a times b to the x, and then gives us a, and it gives us b. Uh, I'm just going to truncate this one when writing it down. So you get 68.693, and then my b was 1.170 to the x. Okay, now we're going to use this to evaluate at 12. So I just want to show you what happened when I stored. Okay, I rounded when I put my answer on my paper, uh, but the calculator is going to give you all these decimals. So that's the importance of storing it, um, is to get that calculator accuracy uh, for any follow-up questions. So I have my exponential stored in Y1, so I'm going to evaluate my function that's stored in Y1 at 12. So again, we do that with the F4 shortcut menu, and you need the parentheses, and this evaluates at 12. So it looks like I'm gonna have 450, let's go ahead and round up two subscribers in December. Okay, lots of things can be modeled with exponential growth. Uh, one example of that is bacteria growth. Um, so we've got a table that shows us the bacteria uh, at a certain number of hours, um, and we're going to run another exponential regression. So let's go through those steps again. We go to stat. Edit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clear out our last values here, and then we'll type these in. Okay, so my data is entered. We're going to get out of the list. Uh, then we're going to go to stat over to calc down to that exponential regression again. Went too far. Exponential regression, list one, list two. We're using it, so let's store it in Y1. And then we will calculate. Okay, so again, I'm going to take those values and plug them in. Okay, so filled in with the correct values from the calculator, we get 399.570 times 1.18 to the x. Uh, then I want to evaluate at 24 to see how many bacteria there are after 24 hours. So we'll do Y1 evaluated at 24, gives us 25,519. E is the natural base, and you've probably seen this before, like in Algebra 2, uh, but it's a natural growth constant, um, and it's used uh, in a lot of exponential functions as the base. Um, so I've got a scenario. The number of mountain lions in a particular forest can be modeled by the exponential function L of t equals 115 E, and that's a, that's a constant, uh, to the point 27 t, where t is measured in years. So we want to know how many lines there are at t equals 6. And looking here, I have a lot of problems 
uh, that we're going to be using the same equation. So one strategy is to store, I'm going to get rid of that regression equation, store your equation in y1. So I'm going to store it 115. To get to e above the natural log button, you'll see a little e to the x. So we're going to do second e to the x, 0.27x. So now any calculations I need involving this equation, I can simply just use y1. Okay, so for how many lines there are at t equals 6, I'm going to get out of here and just evaluate my y1 at 6. And we'll round to the nearest whole number there. And that would be mountain lines. Okay, average rate of change. So that's going to be L of 7 minus L of 1 over 7 minus 1. So that average rate of change, that's going to keep popping up. Uh, but I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to use the fraction bar to help group my top and my bottom. So that's in the F1 shortcut menu. And then we're going to do Y1 evaluated at 7 minus Y1 evaluated at 1 and 7 minus 1 oops. go back uh, over 7 minus 1 which of course is 6 but you know we'll let the calculator worry about it uh, so we get 101.764 and this is going to be mountain lions per year so what that says, on average, between t equals 1 and t equals 7 years, the mountain lions are increasing at about 101 mountain lions per year during that time. Okay, next we want to find the value of t for which the lion population is 1,000. Once we get to logarithms, we're going to have an algebraic way to solve this. Uh, but we want to know when this equation equals... 1,000. Uh, so we can do this algebraically, but we're going to have a calculator anyway, because you're going to need a calculator. Uh, so I'm going to use the fact that I've stored this in my y equals, uh, and I'm going to use the graph. So I'm going to graph my equation, and I'm going to graph a horizontal line at 1,000. For my window, uh, my x is going to be my years. So looking at it, um, at t equals 6, we were at 580. Um, so I might go up to like 10 or 15, let's go 15 to be safe. And if we need to extend it, we will. For my y values, I'm gonna go from zero. I need to be able to see that 1,000. So I need to pick a number bigger than 1,000. So I'm gonna pick 1,200. Now I'm gonna to go to my graph. Uh, there's gonna be my exponential function. And then we're gonna see a horizontal line come in at 1,000. Uh, so my solution is that location to find it above here in on my calculator blue we've got the calc menu so we're going to do second trace which gets us the calc menu we do a lot of things in here we've used it for zeros minimums maximums we're going to use it for the intersection it's going to ask you three questions first curve which we want is our exponential second curve which is my 1000 i only have two curves anyway so that makes it easy um, and then it'll ask you to guess so you want to get close just to help it out uh, and we get, I know it's probably hard to see, um, 8.010. Oh, okay, so that's how we can use the calculator to solve an equation. Um, eventually, like I said, we'll have logarithms that we could do this algebraically if necessary. Uh, the number of ants in a certain colony can be modeled by the equation a of d equals 300 times 1.02 to the d, where d is measured in days. Uh, what we're going to look at is changing that variable to some other unit of time and how that's going to affect our equation. Okay. Uh, so we're going to write an equivalent expression for a of d that gives the number of ants, uh, but instead of being time measured in days, we're going to measure it in weeks. Well. There's seven days in a week.
Okay, so if I'm uh, going 1.02 per day and I do that for seven days, we're going to have 1.02 times 1.02 times 1.02. So this is going to be 1.02 to the seventh is going to be my rate of growth per week. Okay, so I'll write this as 300 times 1.02 to the 7 W. So I could put in weeks into that equation instead of days. And I should make this a W. Okay, uh, now we're going to write an equivalent expression for A of D that gives the number of ants. Uh, but instead of days, we're going to do hours. Uh, so in one day, there are 24 hours. Okay, so how this is going to change the rate of growth, if it takes a whole day to have this 1.02, the fraction of that rate of growth is going to be 1 over 24. We're only going to do 1 over 24 of that for each hour. And then my h is going to be in hours. So we can rewrite this one as 300 times 1.02 times 1 over 24 h. So those are just ways that we can readjust equations by adjusting the growth factor to match our units of time. Uh, so that was section 2.5. Thank you for watching.